there's no sound. Can we have sound on of the laptop? Well, that's okay. It's, oh no, so. Okay. production team of the movie is actually here. So could you please come up and tell us a little bit about the movie? Because I'm, I'm really bad at telling like <laughs> what the actual work is about. So. <clears throat> and I'll just bring up the presentation here. Right. Hi, my name is Eva Franz. And I'm also the other head and heart of this project. I kind of talked very much these past days. I kind of feel like I kind of, I'm out of words at the moment, but I will try to remember. I just wanna, I just wanna, you know, give you an overview of what this project is about. It's like an um, animation short film project that started in 2008, I think, when Andy came up to me and asked me, you want to make a film with me, like stop motion, something short, something like, you something know. really easy. <laughs> yes, very easy. Yeah. And, you know, he saw some, some like short animation film of mine and we kind of got together and like, oh, what could be cool? You know, we're in this art school and um, people are like, I don't know, like everything around us was at this time very abstract and very like, white cube, black cube, something, I don't know. And um, so we just wanted to make something like sci-fi and anime and like something with colors and cool, I guess. Um, so he was into robots, I was like into something colorful, I guess, I don't know. So, but yeah, we got together and like um, by uh, March 2009, we had the script finished. So we worked on the, I mean, mostly uh, Andy did the character sketches and um, I was more into the screenplay. So um, at the same time, we organized kind of a structure at our school, which is like there was nothing there. You know, we needed rooms, cameras, <coughs> lights, and um, all of this kind of stuff. So um, I um, tried to organize um, all of this technical stuff, go to people, ask for money and ask for rooms, ask for space, ask for understanding, and then uh, also we gathered other people to help us. Um, because, um, yeah, like, uh, just in general, you, this whole project has a, lot, has a lot of kind of stations. I don't know who of you is like all in, in like uh, short films or in film gen in general. It's, um, you know, from the screenplay uh, to the finished film, it's a long way. We have uh, basically, um, um, we decided on a concept for, um, for the film, which means like, uh, this is the sci-fi setting. Um, and we, have, we are greatly inspired by anime and docu nature documentary films. And we kind of were looking for, for uh, a look. And um, 
um, like we kind of uh, needed a lot of material, you know, get the things uh, together, build the stuff, ask people to help, help us and um, so this project grew along and it was like uh, we also organized some st a stop motion workshop for us to, you know, get taught into, in other, all those, I don't know, uh, um, skills you have to, to kind of apply for this film. Um, yeah, basically, we have come a long way. Like past then, we wanted to make this this film like within one year or something. <laughs> so, but now it's it's like uh, three years or some something. But it kind of also grew from nine minutes to sixteen minutes. So it's going to be sixteen minutes long. And um, it's um, well, I can say I, uh, at one point we had like twenty five students work helping us. So, like, at our school, in our environment, we, this project also got a lot of, um, um, I don't know, like, respect and money, because a lot of people kind of come together and, um, like, on their own, kind of a very nice link to Blender itself, like the Blender Foundation, because it's also this whole project was something like, it wasn't within any seminar structure, we just made it happen, and all those people supported us, or, supported each other, um, yeah. So I don't know, like, the other things that needed to be done is like animation, um, compositing of the scenes, there's a lot of sets that needed to, need to be extended in their environments um, digitally, so to say, and um, the 3D part is mostly Andy's part and... Can you quickly say what the movie's about? I quickly say what the movie's about. It's about um, kind of... Uh, in a post-apocalyptic place, there's this uh, creature developing that, um, well, <laughs> it's, uh, it's um, that's, uh, well, how would you say that well, you really at this moment? Well, the best person to talk about that. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I just do. Things. Yeah, as I said, I kind of feel like out of words. I said it so many times right now. I don't know. It's like, um, well, it's, it's, a, it's more like an atmospheric setting that you experience this creature um, becoming the perfect life form. Um, and that's like a very philosophical movie, you know, kind of arty and anime-like. So. I hope you kind of like this stuff and... It's also a, a weird movie with robots in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah, I think um, just so much to the, to the kind of background on the, like, what we worked on in these past times. We also had like uh, exhibitions and presentations where we got a little bit of money and, you know, some, um, yeah, like... Uh, uh, possibility to kind of distribute this information about this project and um, yeah I will let you guys now dive into the blender part of it have fun <laughs> okay <laughs> I forgot all the slides, so I, I, I'll just throw them together, but uh, let's see what the next one is. Oh, yeah um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Um, I made that thing because it's actually not apparent to people that stop motion is actually a really complicated thing. Like if you think about it, you have to move, you know, you, you have to move something and then take a picture of it and then, uh, you know, make, move it again and move, take another picture of it. It's like rendering time sort of is instantaneous, but the animation takes a while. But um, yeah, um, I made this little thing. I just stumbled over this footage from, from animation. Uh, you, can see, you can see like a time lapse of all the frames, like uh, of, of all the frames of a specific animation there. And this little moving thing here is one frame only. Um, I, can, I can let that run for a while, but basically, um, like a lot of people come up to us and say, like, why are you spending like f five, four, four years on, on this, like 16 minutes or so? Um, yeah, why? Why? Yeah. 
I don't know. It's it's probably because people have lives and stuff, and you cannot like because in stop motion you're supposed to like you're um, you're kind of um, forced to spend all your life in a really dark room uh, without other people in it because you need to concentrate on your work. Um, I still didn't make that frame, by the way. It's still <laughs> going on. It's it's just a walk, by the way. Um, and you you're forced to not you know, think about the outside world, you have forced to think about only one frame at a time. All right. Um, right so there it goes. Um, anyway, everything else also takes time. So now we're at a point where, like, everything has been shot. Um, we're, we're basically, we have everything, like, um, I'm not sure if we said it, but uh, the, the whole movie is sort of a mixture of stop motion animation and CG, right? But um, it's also like every frame of this movie needs to be processed. Every frame needs to be composited together because uh, we didn't have like we didn't have the money or the time to build an entire world. We we had to take <laughs> shortcuts. So um, most of our environments, uh, like you can see here, are shot in front of red or pink or blue, uh, not, we actually don't have blue screen, but red screen and green screen because some of the things are red and green. Um, so those needed to be extended. And uh, this is, I thought, this was, I thought, where, um, where Blender could be useful for to, you know, to help us with the keying and the compositing and everything. But uh, as it turned out, Blender actually has a bit of a problem with color keying. I wouldn't say it sucks, but um, it's pretty bad. <laughs> so um, after a while, we used another popular open source program for it. And I'm sure it's going to be better for Mango, um, because I don't think you want to suffer, suffer the same things that we went through. So but yeah, Blender was basically used for, uh, for creating like expanding the scenes, um, and also some characters are animated in Blender. But most of all, like the final part, the final chapter of this movie is done completely in Blender. And <clears throat> it sort of has to kind of, uh, I wouldn't say seamlessly blend into the whole stop motion uh, uh, process, but it kind of doesn't have to like, there, there shouldn't be a point where you say, like, all right, this is stop motion, oh my god, this is cool, oh no, and now that's computer animated. It, it kind of has to flow a little bit. Um, in the beginning, we thought, okay, let's just animate everything on twos, right? That's kind of make, like, make all the animation really jerky, but uh, sometimes that doesn't really work, and I'm, that's, that's kind of the thing that we like uh, we realized in the last, in the past months that uh, CG is really one thing and stop motion is the other thing and there are benefits for both. So um, they're kind of not, like they can exist in the same kind of environment but also each of them has a specific thing to tell. All right, so um, luckily to us, uh, since we had all this stuff already done but we didn't really like we didn't really think about the last two scenes and I, I was like, I kind of realized at that point, oh my God, yeah, I'm, I'm finished shooting that but I still have to create the epic fi finale of a movie with like, I'm, I'm only one person. And so luckily enough, the Blender Institute, AKA Ton, uh, gave us uh, space to, to finish, well, so sort of finish this movie but really to drive the creation process in the last two months, uh, the last two scenes of the film, which are like 50 plus shots. Oh, by the way, I, I grabbed something out of the trash can of the Blender Institute yesterday. It was kind of fun. Uh, I realized that this, I threw it away last week. This is the shots of the entire film. Right? Oh, right, like this. Uh, this is like 143, 147 or something. I don't know. Uh, all of these need like some some kind of computer pro uh, processing. Like we use we use After Effects for the most of the uh, color keying here, and uh, all this from this line on. That's that's completely Blender. And uh, there's some Blender. What? Oh, um, that's just a very good. That, this was, no, this was just, 
I, I've just found this big tape and I thought I'd use that because of, well, no. <laughs> I had to put that on a wall at one point, so, um, yeah. Anyway, so, um, that's, like, that's an insane amount of stuff to do for, like, only us two, because uh, right now we're just, like, too, too crazy about the whole thing. We really want to get it right. And at the same time, we're also discovering a lot uh, in that process, so we kind of, we, we can't really give anything away because everything is still in our brains and it needs to come out in some way. So, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm sure you saw this little thing online. Uh, that's also one reason why it's really cool to be at the Blender Institute, which is the Render Farm. Um, the Render Farm is really cool. Uh, it's, uh, you're going to see it tomorrow, by the way. Who's, who's, uh, who of you is coming to the Blender Institute, right? Come on, more, more people. You have to inspect the place. You can see our sauna. You can see the swimming pool. Um, this is the advanced cooling system. Engineered by the best vendor engineer uh, in, in the whole Netherlands, Tom Rosendahl. Outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Render air. <laughs> Go Omega air. So, judging from the complexity of this movie, we breathe it, we breathe it, breathe, breathe. Like, we, we had a lot of that render air uh, for about almost two months, really. So, and, and breathing in render air for a long time, don't, don't do it. <laughs> so, uh, basically, so all of the, um, I kind of messed up the slides just a little bit, but this here, um, <laughs> what? Come on, this, this thing here. I just switched on the really, really high performance graphics card in this computer, so m maybe OpenOffice just doesn't like it. Oh no, it's LibreOffice now, I think. Relaunch. Um, Start recovery. Finish. Awesome. Right? Yeah. This is the entire movie. Um, this is all the shots. And some of these are Blender, and the, all the rest is uh, computer generated. And now I'm just going to like uh, put that away because you're not supposed to see this. Um, uh, the, last, the last two scenes of the movie feature uh, an incredible amount of geometry, uh, matte paintings, and computer animation. Um, but uh, if, you're, like, if you're only one person, you kind of have to cheat. That's what, what, I, what I really like with uh, Ian's uh, working process, because like, it's all cheating. And you can do so many amazing things if you if you're only one person, if you know a way, the way around your tools. And I think Blender is really good at that kind of stuff. So um, my job basically was to, was to animate those 50 shots and uh, do matte paintings for it, and uh, then do the compositing. OK, well, um, some examples. <clears throat> for example, this shot. Um, I'm, I won't explain what's happening here. This is basically um, uh, an OpenGL animation from, from the viewport. You can see lots of helper objects there. Um, and uh, this, I, al I also have all the passes for this. And now, um, if you kind of 
<clears throat> well, I like to think in terms of passes like all the time um, to, you know, to get all these things to like all these effects together, you kind of have to know what you can do, you know, with just what you have. Um, basically, I had to, you know, to create all these fire effects and everything. Mm -hmm. I had to uh, create lots of meshes with modifiers and then put them on different render layers and stuff like that. And, uh, oh, you can't see that here. Um, but <clears throat> just to give you an example of how, like, how many, how many things are needed to come together for just one thing. This is really dark, by the way, on this screen. Can we kind of increase the brightness for this now? Or we can turn off the lights, yeah. Yeah, right. Well, okay, so kind of see this stuff going on there, kind of blurring that just a little bit and then color correcting it, then do some masking and mask out that thing with the other thing and then put that on top and do some distortion feel and then just render some clouds, color correct them, uh, create a mask, take those clouds and distort them again. And there's lots, lots of little things that happen in this image. So, uh, and most of that, like most of these last two scenes feature lo lots of these effects, so I, I, made, I basically made a library of nodes to, like of little node groups to kind of take care of these effects and I just needed to put them together. Um, <clears throat> so if you want, I can, I can show you the notes set up, set up for this file. Do you want to see it? Yeah. yeah. All right. I have I have all the files here. I can, by the way, I can also ton make sure that I, that I can, from any point in the world, access the Blender Institute render farm and harness the power to uh, to create our movie. Because, uh, yeah, I even now I can I can log into the Blender Institute render farm. Yeah, if if, if I can connect to the internet, I can also do that if we have the time. Right, but I'm. Anyway, um, I, I still have some stuff to show. If I run out of things, um, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. It's gonna take a while. So this is the scene. My computer is kind of slow, so it, it can't quite handle all of that. I was really, uh, really happy to, to be using the, right, okay. I was really happy to be using the, the dual Xeon machine and the, the Blender Institute, which has like 16, uh, you can run 16 threads. It has 25 gigs of RAM. It's kind of cool, and yeah, basically here you can see all the things that are going on. We have the background layer here, we can have the character here. They get processed differently from the effects. We have two kind of uh, effect overlays. We have a morphing thing and we have a fire thing. The fire thing is just a mesh on a different layer, which looks like this, for example. Oh, I have this on which looks like this, for example. That's just a modifier with a texture on it um, uh, that's displacing the mesh. And uh, basically, the only thing it, that it does is to create this kind of uh, distortion field effect. And uh, that is, of course, rendered on a different render layer, and we can use that to mask out other things and also to distort the, uh, the base underneath it. By the way, distortion is one thing that I use quite a, Quite a lot. Like uh, I made this little group. Oh, I made this little group node here called RGB Distort. Um, it's just basically using uh, three times a displacement effect, uh, but on all channels separately. So I can so I can give an offset to the colors and get some nice chromatic aberration effect in the distortion field. That's very straightforward. So, um, but. Yeah, to, to set up that each and every time, and I have like, I think 10, 10, of, 10 RGB distort nodes in this, uh, kind of takes some time. So this is where the, the group node system really works well. And also, um, group nodes now look really, really awesome since last time I checked them. Um, 
I haven't, before that, I haven't quite used Blender for a while, but it's really like it's really gone a long way from like one year ago even. I mean, it's it's almost usable now, right? <laughs> so. <clears throat> Big round of applause for all the developers, I guess. <laughs> and uh, then we just, well, we basically bring everything together here towards the end. So this is kind of the way that I like to work. And I, I, I know I talk about that all the time, every time I talk about Blender, but basically I, I like I, I kind of stack everything from the bottom layer to the top layer, um, from bottom to top here. And that kind of results in really strange alpha overs where you kind of flip the lines in between, but um, it also, like, it helps my way of thinking. Um, this is also one thing I'd re really like to improve with, uh, you know, that, uh, with Mango to kind of make this really intuitive to understand because like what I've realized is that like big, really big node setups get really, really complicated mm -hmm. to understand. And it kind of take a while. It takes a while to to fully grasp what is going on here, especially when there's multiple people working on one project, and you cannot spend like half an hour to to understand the, another person's file. Um, and then everything kind of go, uh, comes together here at the end. This is the color correction part where we just have a thing called glow and a thing called grain and a vignette and the final grade. The final grade is just an RGB curves in that one group, but it's, uh, I, I, I kind of wanted to append it to other files and use it there too, so that's why it's a group. Um, <clears throat> right. Um, any questions to that file? I'm just going to close it then. If, you know, right. Oh yeah, you can add comments to it. Can you add comments to it? What? Comments? Oh yeah, you can hand draw all the comments, right? <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you're like if your handwriting is really bad, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> so I think this also needs some kind of uh, there's there's now, now this new feature called frames. You can add a frame to kind of group notes together, but it's not like a group, it's more like a frame, I guess, which is kind of a step into the right direction, but there, is there really another way to think about it? I don't know. Um, right, by the way, all of these, um, all of these little group notes that have come together in the whole uh, creation process in the last couple of weeks, I'm going to put them online uh, like next week or so, you can download them. I'm gonna give you the URL later. Um, another thing, we have, so that's, oh, by the way, I haven't, I haven't shown you the final image, have I? This, 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 all right, this is kind of how it looks like, sort of, in, in the final movie. Um, so, <clears throat> there is also this, and uh, thanks to thanks to this project, I got to got to use many other things that I haven't used before. For example, volumetrics and uh, par fluid particles. These are fluid particles. Fluid particles are really really cool because they're fluid, but there's al there are also particles, so you can influence them <laughs> with. Uh, I'm not joking, that's for real. But they're also, uh, they're, you can also influence them with other meshes and they're not, they're, like they, they generate a series of points so you can use them, for example, to drive smoke. I, I didn't use smoke sim. By the way, lots of things are blowing up in the last part. They're not really blowing up, but that's kind of, yeah. There's a lot of smoke going on, so yeah. Um, so, that's the pre-calculation time. Now the animation starts. That's where the render starts too. Like when, when things are moving, this is a deflector mesh, and uh, these particles are just there to give us a point cloud to uh, to to like to drive the uh, the, the volumetrics with. 
Um, the final shot kind of looks like this. Right like that. Is it that? Right here. This. These are actually two shots. I just thought it would be cool to put them together. That's the one thing that you saw in the beginning. Um, basically, I haven't uh, hadn't had haven't had quite uh, the time to to use the the smoke engine, so I I f fell back to particles. That's that was the one thing that I knew. So, and also the the volume that we need to needed to generate all the smoke in was quite large. So. Uh, mm -hmm particles were kind of faster to do that. So um, to get all these things together, I also had a lot of passes. I can show you the first shot. This is that. Hmm. All right. Oh, by the way, that's a model that was, uh, that was just uh, sculpted and then texture painted inside of Blender. Blender's texture painting has quite, gotten quite, quite good, I must say. Um, then we render some custom-made meshes, blur them, kind of add more contrast, and then there's some ghosty, flamey, uh, Thing going on there, really interesting. I don't know what's going on there. So it's uh, kind of important to the movie, so I can't really mention it. Um, and here's our smoke layer with uh, the model masked out. Uh, there's some problems with uh, smoke <laughs> and uh, alpha overing stuff. The smoke has quite some problems with anti-aliasing, so I had to work around that a little bit. By, by masking out some, some areas of the intersections between the mesh and the smoke and kind of blur them to get it together more nice. <clears throat> now we are, we've combined everything and we're heading into the final part, the last part of the composite again. This is the grading phase. And uh, we kind of just apply a general glow on top of everything to get to get glow, and that's some desaturation, some sharpening, some vignette effect, and uh, then just kind of color correcting it overall. By the way, we're going to do a, a final color correction phase, like if we have the full, uh, full thing to get like all the frames of the movie finished and rendered, um, and I hope that's also going to be done in Blender because Blender is really cool for. Uh, like editing a large part of uh, a large base of frames. <clears throat> um, yeah, but I mean, uh, compositing, like color correcting one OpenXR frame is, is not, doesn't take that long really. Right. It can be just really fast. And uh, I hope with OpenCL compositing, it's going to be even better. I mean, yeah. And also, After Effects sucks for that kind of stuff. Um, this is the other frame. So we just bring it, like, bring the mesh together into the scene, render the smoke layer. Uh, these are all the fluid particles. They're just, like, basically spheres that uh, are, that, that kind of tell the volume that there's a, uh, a smoke thing going on, so there's little spheres of smoke. And in the final animation, you can't really see that there are spheres, but it's, uh, since, like, the fluid particles, you kind of uh, can give the particles uh, an attraction to each other, and uh, so things stick together a bit more nicely, and uh, everything hopefully behaves like a mass of smoke. This, this is the masking I was talking about, so I had to mask out the edges somehow to bring them together because like, things that overlap smoke kind of give bad anti-aliasing right now, even with uh, full sample oversampling right now. I don't know what's the problem with that, but 
hopefully someone's going to look into that. Um, this is, you can't really see that, but this is um, a final, uh, this, this is a distorted mesh. Uh, it's on a separate render layer, it's also blurred, and this is kind of mixed together uh, using some C depth effects to uh, also distort the background and also to kind of Um, yeah, right. <coughs> kind of uh, give it a bit more like a, a really, really slow moving, cool flame that's on top of everything. And again, we're entering the final compositing stage. This is the final, the final graded, graded image. All right, uh, any questions to that? I can also show you the notes for that. I'm not sure if I can understand. Oh yeah, right. All right. Um, well, basically, I can show you how it's done. I mean, uh, if people are interested in that, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, you have seen this, right? So this is the this is fluid particles. It's just one particle system. This is a deflector. To render all that as a fluid um, takes some time, so I, I, I didn't want to do that. But uh, so I needed something to drive the volumetrics, and I kind of wanted it to behave like a mass of things. Uh, and uh, for everyone who, who knows Blender particles, they, they're quite good at like if you do lots of really like lots of things, like everything kind of bounces into any direction, that's, okay, that's cool, but if you want to have something that behaves like a mass, um, it's, not really, uh, it's not really good to use the default physics type for that, so that's what fluid, uh, fluid particles are good for. Um, <clears throat> I'll just quickly open that file. I'm not sure if it opens fast. I don't think it will open fast. Um, <coughs> Even on the dual Xeon, it doesn't, it takes a while. It's, uh, it's not the particles, it's, um, it's the mesh, it's actually appending because the character that is emerging from the clouds, there is um, kind of really large to... Well, uh, the, the thing that you can see here that I'm not going to put in shaded view for obvious reasons is, um, uh, is sculpted and uh, has a rig I used Rigify to rig it, by the way. It's really cool. And that takes a while to get all that sculpted data into the, in, in, into the memory, so. Yeah. But it still works, which is magic, I think. <laughs> okay, so. This is our bound, the bounding box for the volume. Well, not the bounding box for the volume, but this is, this is the volume, the actual volume, which has a volume material, um, which you can, cannot see here, but it's there. Um, by the way, I used the, the uh, what is it called, the cloud generator script for uh, generating the start, uh, like the basis of all my simulations. It's really cool. Um, it's, it's an add-on. Uh, you can enable it, enable it, and you get like a button where you can say "Add Clouds." And uh, but it really helped me understanding how the volumetrics uh, functions, like basically work. So that's cool. But I, I modified all the options. So this is the material. Um, has a density of 0.6 something. I can I I always uh, vary the density scale. So uh, the density is zero, and I'm driving. I'm basically using the. Uh, the point density to drive the, uh, the, 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 the density of the mesh. And 
the point density is just taken from those smoke particles. That's all. Um, and they have a radius. But that's, but it's there, there, there's no voodoo, it's just like, yeah. Um, also, um, what's kind of tricky is to get these turbulence settings right here, and I um, kind of took some time to, to get these things, like, to figure that out. Um, also, another thing that's really kind of tedious is to figure out the, right li uh, the light cache for it, because without the light cache, it takes a long time to render, and with the light cache, it, it's a bit faster, but pre-calculating the, the light cache takes some time, and it's only using one CPU for that, which uh, kind of drove the renders up to, uh, like the render time a bit higher. Anyway, um, <clears throat> okay, next. Two minutes, but I have to talk about everything else. Okay, well then, um, three minutes. It depends how many questions people have. Okay, uh, last quick thing, I'll just show another uh, really quick shot. Um, this was also a shot that was, I was working on two days ago before the conference. I, I just flew here uh, a bit earlier and uh, I kind of sat down and thought, oh my God, let's work on the movie before we uh, see the Blender conference. So um, again, we have some scene stuff here. It's rendered with ambient occlusion and some lights, and uh, we have a mist layer. And uh, so we take that layer and multiply the ambient occlusion to get it a bit darker and everything. And then we have uh, a brightness pass. Ba basically, the brightness pass is just the emit value of these uh, little points there. And uh, then we kind of color correct all of that, and we take the mist, and put the character, thing, robot in there, just using a basic alpha over. But before we do that, we have a matte painting in the background, so really quickly by just slapping some meshes together. And uh, we also do some kind of, some distortion on the background. You can see that coming up here. And uh, just some really subtle effects. I, I've, I really like that. I really like the node system for that because it can get you all these little subtle things that you can like uh, tweak and adjust. And uh, some programs really don't let you do that and Blender's really awesome for that. This is the smoke, uh, the volumes. And I'll just, like, I just use the mist layer and the volume layer together to get it, kind of balance it out a bit. And we have an overall glow. We have some lens distortion. Um, the lenses, lens distortion in the movie is not overused. I, I really didn't want to say like, oh my god, it's a distorted lens and it has chromatic aberration. I just wanted to like, give it a slight touch of realism that you wouldn't get otherwise. So I, I wanted to like, not really jump in your face and say, hey, I'm a computer generated image. Um, this is the shot, how it looks like. Also, again, I won't say what's happening there. Oh, you can see some problems going on with those barrels that, that are floating down there. Uh, the, the rigid body simulation right now in Blender is really, really flaky um, because you have to load, you have to you know, assign logic bricks to it and get it into the game engine, then record everything, and then. Uh, which is kind of not really nice to do if you have lots and lots of objects. And also, it's a, it's a nightmare to do if you have things that are animated with it and uh, with, uh, with uh, animation curves. So, yeah, I really hope this is going to be improved too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a shot. Um, I, can, I, can, I can show you more, but we only have one minute left, right? And Tan wants me to stop. <laughs> no, that's so awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. What, what's the po what's the highest point? I haven't thought beyond that. Like I haven't 
fought up the, to the highest point. I kind of, I thought I'd just show stuff and then. Yeah. So, do you want to see that thing again? Okay, yeah. It's not uh, the release date. <laughs> like when people are actually going to see it. Oh, well, we're basically done. Kind of. Um, it's going to take us a few, like, we're working towards a deadline right now, which is kind of soon this month. Or is it? It's not. No, ne next month. Right. <laughs> um, uh, mid, like, in the middle of this month, we will basically, we'll basically be done, and there's some small things that need to be done. Every, th every shot in this movie exists. It's now 16 minutes long, and it's going to be longer than 16 minutes, okay? Plus credits and everything. So, um, and then color correction and sound and that kind of stuff. But it's basically finished, so um, we're, it's going to run on a few festivals first. And uh, then um, probably sometime next year, we, we can probably put it out on the internet. But also, I mean, how would you like to, to view this movie? Do you want to, like, do you want to see it on YouTube? Or do you want to see it in a theater? Or, I mean, uh, do you want to, like? IMAX. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, or do you want to order DVDs? I mean, that's something that we, uh, we still have to find out. What's the, what's the best way to? to Publish this, and I, I'd really like to have your feedback on that. Um, okay, one really, really quick. Yeah. Yeah. You'll probably be able to see it in the theater first. I hope. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so, um, but up to this point. Uh, I'll just put this on here. It's kind of that's our website. Um, I kind of start, uh, started uh, twittering a few months ago, so everything I, I kind of I, I discovered during the process of making these shots, I put on Twitter because it's great to just say something blah, 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 and it gets off your mind and you cannot you don't have to think about it anymore. So if you want, you can follow me on Twitter. You can send me a message uh, and uh, visit our uh, website. Um, Kind of right now, we just want to generate some interest in this movie. So um, tell your friends. No question? Yes? No question. All right. Someone raised their hands. OK. Question. Sam. Yes, we want to see the teaser one more time. Right. <laughs> OK, can we have the lights down, please? Just for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, this is the sad moment always at the end of the conference. I really thought it was a fast conference this time. It's like as if it only was one day or something. What? You had that feeling too? 
Or maybe we have to go to like five or six day conferences to, to compensate a little bit for that feeling. Yeah. So I can only say I had the best conference ever. I always have that, but it keeps getting better and better. Great people, great speakers. I really, really had a great time, and I hope you guys had a great time too. Um, I would like to thank a couple of people first. Um, only one uh, last thing. Is there a Martin Tegelaars here? Martin? Martin? We found a book from you, a sketchbook with uh, notes and concepts and stuff. It's at the desk. A black uh, sketchbook. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's do some body uh, exercising and give a big thanks to uh, Anja and Anne at the desk. Open the door that they can hear it. I'd like to thank uh, Nathan uh, and Thomas. Where's Thomas? 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 Dinges, where are you? There he is. Nathan is already home. They helped uh, organizing the speakers. I'd like to have uh, for the stream a big applause for Jared De Beer, who did the whole Susanna Awards, the website, and everything. Jared, thank you. Um, Andy, who did the book, the book design, of the, the booklet for the conference. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Pablo, Basham, Ian, and Andy, who did the uh, Susanna Award motion track uh, intros. <laughs> Thank you. And of course, uh, the Bali, I want to thank you, and the guys upstairs for the technique. Thank you. <laughs> and all the speakers for making this an awesome conference. Thank you, too. <laughs> so next year, if you want to put it in your agenda, it will be the weekend around uh, 12, 13, 14 October. So not the last weekend of October, but we will celebrate next year that Blender is 10 years open source. And that happened uh, in 2002 at 13 October in the Waag. So I'll put it in your agenda. I hope you come back next year. And if you want to speak up, I uh, want to say something, this is a moment for some feedback, and then we close and have a beer. So is there anything you'd like to say? Uh, do it now. Uh, compliments or suggest suggestions or... Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Go, 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 go. Go, one more. <laughs> so any, any ideas about how to make it a better conference? Are you going to move to other cities? Or do you want to have 10-day conferences? <laughs> or do you want to have a conference without a schedule so you guys have more, more time to talk to each other? Because uh, that was a lot of, or more artist sessions. Or, or was it okay this time? More artist sessions, yeah. Are hmm? oh, you were talking? Oh, no? Okay. This is. More blending, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, then I, I declare the conference for closed, and I'll see you guys next year. Thank you.
Oh 